and Apple are using technology to help track the spread of the coronavirus. The two companies want to create a tool that would let you know if you were ever in contact with somebody who tested positive. So Dan Patterson is joining us now to tell us all about this whole idea. How would something like this work, Dan? Hey, good morning. Good to see you. So this is a two-phased rollout uh, by Apple and Google, two very famous competitors. It will start with applications designed and developed by public health departments and approved by these two competitors for their uh, Android and iOS operating systems. The users would then uh, allow permissions. It would anonymize their data. And uh, according to the two tech companies, this would not be stored in the cloud and would communicate using Bluetooth. This is the low power signal that allows your device to talk to, say, an Apple Watch or to headphones wirelessly. Now, what they claim is that uh, users who have been diagnosed as positive uh, for having the coronavirus would then voluntarily enter this positive information into this application, which would then notify other phones around them using what we call contact tracing. This is a lot like it sounds. It is when you are in contact with somebody or at least close distance to somebody, kind of tracks the spread of the individual. So phase one is these applications that would be rolled out and installed by users for a voluntary process. Phase two is a little more complicated. It will come in mid-May, according to the two companies, and it will uh, involve an operating system update to put a lot of the functionality that will initially be in those applications embedded deep within uh, the, the OS. Uh, they say this is so that users don't have to go through the trouble of downloading an app and so that uh, health departments don't have to maintain these applications uh, for long periods of time. It would work very similarly. Uh, these are anonymized tokens, so it is not you, your name. It's not even, according to the tech companies, your geographical location. It is just a token that represents a positive or negative uh, result. And it, again, uses Bluetooth to say, I've come in contact with phones X, Y, and Z. So, Dan, what are the privacy concerns surrounding this technology? Well, flat. You can imagine they're pretty significant. How many times have you heard a technology firm uh, say, hey, look, we got privacy taken care of. Oops, uh, there was a bug. There was a hole. There was a bad actor who exploited it. Oh, turns out that hundreds of millions of users' information uh, leaked onto the web. Uh, look, we're not doubting the intentions of the technology firms here, but the capabilities of these companies to stomp out what are called zero-day bugs, these are exploits hackers use to extract information, look, these just exist. And the privacy concerns are pretty significant. Uh, even though they say no uh, personal information will be tied to the token, there's no way for us really to verify this. And once this is embedded into an operating system, uh, even though they say they will turn it off, after coronavirus, the risk of coronavirus has, has receded, we don't really have a guarantee that this will happen. It is simply a method for them to say, here's a token that represents a user, and this token can be tracked uh, all around. So there are significant concerns here. I can definitely see how there could be significant concerns. I'm just kind of like playing it out in my head and, you know, you sort of go into this kind of sci-fi script mode. But I, I mean, I, I can only imagine that you're sort of in a store and somebody else walks in and there's a ping on your phone. I'm sure it wouldn't work that, that obviously, but I don't know how you protect people's health privacy um, when in small groups, you can almost sort of deduce who might have been the one that introduced the virus to your small group. Uh, maybe I'm going like sort of way out there. Um, but I know this is what um, the job of technology companies, right? They look for new and innovative ways to use technology to solve problems. And then uh, they need to be sort of boundaries and roadblocks put up, put up to make sure that our uh, rights are protected. Uh, but this is happening all over the world. Give us a sense of what else is happening with tech companies, how they're using technology in innovative ways to deal with this virus. Anne-Marie, let's sum this up in a quote. A selfie an hour will keep the police away. This was tweeted by Anil Kumar, uh, and the government of southern India has developed this app called Quarantine Watch. 
This is does use geographical uh, location, and this is designed to keep people in their homes Except for the hours between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m., the app will require users to take a selfie along with other identifiable meta information like your GPS data to assure that you have stayed home. Now, there are no guarantees that this will be turned off at the end of coronavirus. And we have certainly see, uh, just like you alluded to a moment ago, Anne-Marie, a uh, kind of mob mentality emerge when there is even the the suspicion that health risks may be at play. So, uh, I mean, that quote really sums it up. A selfie an hour will keep the police away. We can certainly see this type of uh, kind of cyberpunk weird future emerging from places that are a little more authoritarian and then leaking out through the rest of the world as tactics become effective. All right, Dan Patterson, uh, really, really interesting stuff. Uh, as always, Dan, thank you, my friend. Appreciate it. Love your, uh, your background there, where you are. Looks like you're in your attic, which uh, is pretty nice to have an attic. So we appreciate uh, your reporting. We're all very grateful for the things uh, that we have and our health uh, during this time where so many people are hurting. Indeed, mm -hmm. indeed. Thanks, my friend. You too. You can read more about contact tracing and the privacy concerns surrounding it on cbsnews.com.